Hey guys, Metal Jesus here, and today is a very good day because I am taking a road trip to a brand new, or I guess I should say relatively new, retro gaming store in the Seattle area. This is a place I've never been before, but I've heard some very good things about it. Now I'm saying the Seattle area, but technically it's in one of the suburbs to the south called Kent. So this is a store called Game Bound, and they are in Kent, Washington. And so I'm very excited to do some game hunting at the store. And at the end of this video, I'm gonna share with you the pickups that I got. And so it's about a 30 minute drive from downtown Seattle. And when I arrive, it's in one of those small strip malls with a bunch of little stores. It's kind of one of those things where if you were to blink, you might miss it. But uh, when I walked in there, I was kind of blown away because yes, this place is small, but man, it is packed full of games. And right off the bat, I am greeted by the owner, Kai, and also his manager, Shane. And uh, basically, they just let me kind of wander around with my camera. And again, I love these kind of places because, well, I don't have to tell you guys if you're watching this channel, watching these videos, you know that I absolutely love game hunting and finding a new place like this, especially one that's kind of untapped, you know? I don't think a lot of people, a lot of local collectors in the Seattle area know about this place just yet. And so it was pretty exciting walking in there going, wow, there's a bunch of games in here I haven't seen in a while. And I do think it's a really nice touch that even though this is a relatively small store, they make room to have all of these gaming kiosks set up where you can just walk up and play a game, you know, like you used to when you'd go into one of those big box stores back in the day. But I'll be honest, one of the reasons why I was excited to come down here is because they told me that they had a bunch of big box PC games. They recently had a guy come in who was a collector who was selling his entire estate to just go live in a van down by the river and wanted to get rid of a bunch of big box PC games. So they're like, hey, man, we know you like these. You might want to come down and take a look. And yeah, I wasn't disappointed. Like I said, I'm going to show you at the end all of them that I got, but I got some really really cool stuff you don't normally see. And you know, collecting big box PC game stuff is, it, you know, it's a challenge because what do I mean by that? You know, again, it could be everything from the 80s to the 90s to the early 2000s. And they had a little bit of a mix of everything here, really. And a lot of them that I already had some variations of covers that I hadn't actually seen before. And again, it's a mix of MS-DOS, Windows, Amiga. There was some Commodore stuff there. It was. It was kind of all over the place, but uh, man, yeah, it was cool to see some of this. In addition to the big box PC games, they also had a bunch of the DVD sized ones. Those are the ones from the mid 2000s to kind of right up to the end where basically everything got switched over to Steam and digital, but they do have a bunch of those. I don't typically collect those because they don't really have manuals and all the extra little stuff that I like, but they're here if you're interested in them. You can always tell if a retro gaming store is serious if they actually have a working Virtual Boy for sale along with games. Very cool. A lot of different kind of handheld stuff here. Some of the stuff you would normally see, but then they had a bunch of Turbo Graphics games as well. Again, something I don't normally see in the in the downtown Seattle area simply because there's so many game collectors and they just kind of clean the whole thing out. Uh, another real surprise here was the Panasonic Q. That of course is the beautiful GameCube. They have one of those, that's awesome. Reggie is a big collector of boxed Game Boy games, both original and advanced. So I'm gonna have to let him know that they have a bunch here for him. And just check out this wall o games. This is everything from, well, basically as you saw in the beginning there, you know, Master System games and Genesis games, PlayStation, two, three, we have Xbox, Xbox 360. It just kind of goes on and on forever. Ever since I reviewed the Polymega, now I'm kind of on a kick to get more PlayStation 1 games. And uh, you see some of the more collectible ones here. Maybe a little out of my price range, but yeah, it was cool to see them. Now, one of the more impressive parts of this store is this massive glass case that is towards the back. And essentially what they've done is created shrines to different Nintendo franchises. And so you see a bunch of them here, including ones dedicated to uh, Mario Brothers, you have Kirby, you've got Metroid, you've got uh, Resident Evil, you've got just a ton of stuff like Pokemon, things like that. And the reason why that they do that is because 
you know, there are a certain percentage of customers that come in the door that ask them for, hey, what's a good Mario game? Or what's a good Zelda game? Or what's a good Resident Evil game? And they can very quickly point to these glass cases here, these shrines that they've built, and essentially go, hey, you know, there are all of them, or almost all of them, you know, take your pick because they're all for sale. I thought that was a really cool sales tactic. That's very smart. Also in this case is a collection of sealed games. These are brand new sealed games, basically just new old stock. Now they have a bunch of them, you know, on display here that people can just walk up and buy if they want to. But another thing that they do that I thought was pretty interesting is that they have a list of games that they can then order from their distributor. And so customers can come in, look at this massive list, and it just goes pages and pages long. And basically they can try to find it for you and you know ship it right to the store. And uh, if, if you are, if you happen to be one of these collectors that you know only wants sealed games, or maybe it's one of your favorite games and you just want a brand new copy of it, they can do that. That's pretty interesting. I feel like the store has a nice mix of those kind of rare and expensive games that they keep behind glass for protection and kind of only for the people who are serious, as well as the more common and you know more reasonably priced games out just on the shelves that people can walk up and take a look at. And so, you know, and it's a mix of everything, again, from the very common to PlayStations and Nintendo systems and stuff like that to, you know, some of the Saturn games and Sega, Sega CD games. Again, they would have stuff that would be available on the shelf, not super expensive, but, you know, stuff that would be a little bit more common. And then you would have to maybe also look behind the counter to get some of the more collectible and expensive ones. So again, you know, it's a nice mix. Not everything in here is just super common and not everything is super expensive. One area of collecting that I've been focusing a lot of my attention on, especially when I come into a place that's new, is in the DS and the PSP area. Well, I've, okay, I'll be honest, I've actually been collecting PSP games for years now, but now that GameStops are starting to phase out, you know, complete copies of DS and 3DS, well, when I go into stores like these, I'm looking for them because they're getting hard to find and, you know, in general, they're still relatively inexpensive. And so these guys had a nice collection of 3DS and DS games and I ended up buying a couple of them. All right, well, I have my stack of goodies here, so I'm gonna go ahead and check out. And here's where I wanna mention something. And that is that when I've done these kind of Seattle retro gaming store tour videos in the past, well, you know, not everyone lives here and so, Many of you who have watched these videos have asked me, you know, it would be cool if some of these stores actually sold online as well. Well, Gamebound does have a website and they do sell games. And so um, I'm gonna put a link down in the video description below where you guys can go and actually check out, uh, you know, most of their inventory. You can contact them directly. And they're gonna also give viewers of my channel 10% off. So that's something that they offer to do. I'm not getting a commission on that or anything like, I'm not affiliated with these guys at all. It's just that basically if you want to buy games from them, you can and you can get a discount if you want. So check it out. All right, I'm back home and let's go ahead and take a look at the loot that I picked up, including Dino Crisis on PC. This is a game that most people typically think of as a console game, but back then Capcom was releasing some of these games on big box PC and, uh, this is a little bit of a beat up box. And because of that, I was able to get a pretty good deal here. This is a game that can sell for, you know, a pretty penny online. And so it was cool to get that for the collection. Now here's one I was really excited to see. So this of course is Silent Hill 2 on the PC. Now it has an old sticker on there for $10. I did not pay $10 for this because, well, complete copies of this on eBay sell for hundreds, sometimes thousands of dollars, depending on the condition. This is an incredibly uncommon PC game. Now, most of those really expensive versions do come with a little mini version of the box. This does not have that. So it's not complete. Again, 
Um, you know, they gave me a hell of a deal on this. I did not pay anywhere near eBay prices, thankfully, but it's such a cool version of the game. I love the Silent Hill series. And again, I had no idea this was actually even released on PC, let alone big box version. So when they, when they had it there, yeah, it had to go home with me. Another really cool one to find is the original Max Payne. Uh, again, big box version of it with that gatefold that opens up and the game inside. Now, originally this was sold with a limited edition mouse pad included. It's not in my box. So again, you know, another reason why I was able to get a good deal on these and I don't really care. I mean, it'd be cool to have the, the mouse pad in there, but just having the big box version of it to sit on the shelf and be archived is pretty dang cool. I love Max Payne, so fantastic game. Here's a game I thought was pretty interesting and I had to pick it up because I do really like SSI games. I've been actually trying to get kind of all of them that they released, which is a big, big chore. But this is a game called Cyclones. Again, I had never seen this one before. Turns out it is developed by Raven Software. Now, Raven Software might sound familiar because they're still around today, but they originally made Heretic and Hexen back in the day. So this is one of their early first person shooters, which again, I had no idea, but they've gone on to make um, Quake. They made uh, Doom 3. They're working on the Call of Duty franchise now. And again, this is one of their very first games. I also picked up a copy of SSX Tricky for the GameCube, and you might be surprised to learn that I don't already own this, and that's because I don't, at least not until now. Um, I always owned the PS2 version and the Xbox version, but it's kind of one of those things where I love the series so much, I'm kind of trying to get all the different variants that are out there, and so I had to get the GameCube version. Now, the thing that's kind of surprising is that SSX Tricky and also SSX3 is getting a little hard to find, at least in the wild. It's not hard to find online, but for some reason, uh, out at retro gaming stores, I don't really find it that often. I mentioned that I'm always on the lookout for PSP games that I don't own, and here is one I thought I owned, but I didn't. I actually don't know anything about it. Uh, Aliens vs. Predator Requiem. Uh, you see it's published by Sierra there, which is kind of interesting, but yeah, a PSP game that I didn't own. I don't know anything about it, but seems like it might be kind of cool. Who knows? I picked up a couple DS games. This is Dig Dug Digging Strike. Something that I had no idea what this was, but I do really like Dig Dug. I like the original Dig Dug in the arcades. So I was kind of curious to see what the DS version would be like. I also picked up this copy of GoldenEye Rogue Agent on the Nintendo DS. Now, the reason why I did that is because I'm kind of on this kick of playing first person shooters on the DS and the 3DS. And the reason for that is because sometimes those are really fun and kind of unique versions of these games. I have no idea if this is any fun at all. Uh, you'll have to let me know down in the comments below, but it's just kind of one of those little kicks that I'm on to find kind of weird and unusual DS games. And again, I'm a sucker for the first person shooters on it. And I picked up some 3DS games, including Tetris Axis. This is one of the few Tetris games that I don't already own, but I'm a sucker for the games that are released on the 3DS. Uh, I do like the 3D you know, modeling that they do. And this seems pretty interesting. So it's got 20 different modes, including an augmented reality mode. I don't know what that's gonna be like, but I can't wait to try it. I've been a fan of the Asphalt Arcade Racing series for a while now. I think I played the original probably on like my iPhone 4 or something like that back in the day, but I didn't own the 3D version. And again, so I had to pick that up. It was super cheap. Can't wait to check it out. And then they had a copy of Rayman 3D for relatively cheap. So this is a remake for the 3DS of Rayman 2 The Great Escape, which is a fantastic game. So. I'm very excited to get the 3DS version here. Again, I don't see these anymore when I'm out and about, especially at GameStops. You might get lucky occasionally, but yeah, this was pretty cool to find. All right, guys, that's a quick tour and game pickups from my time at GameBound in Kent, Washington. And like I mentioned, they're only about 30 minutes south of downtown Seattle. So if you live in the Seattle area and you're a game collector and you haven't visited the store yet, you definitely should. Or if you don't happen to live here, you might want to check out their website. They're adding new stock, new inventory to it all the time. And like I mentioned, 
they're gonna give viewers of my channel 10% off just using the checkout code. I'll put all the links down in the video description below. As always guys, I wanna thank you for watching my channel. Thanks so much for subscribing and take care.